In this problem, we're told a mug rests on an inclined surface as shown in this figure. A, what is the magnitude of the frictional force exerted on the mug? And B, what is the minimum coefficient of static friction required to keep the mug from sliding? So the first thing you always want to do is draw what's going on and then draw a free body diagram representing the different forces acting on your object. So we have this mug. It's going to have a mass of 0.27 kilograms and it's going to be inclined right at 14 uh, degrees. And so now what we want to do is label the forces. So every object is going to have a weight force which is just going to be the mass times the gravity. And then we're going to have a normal force going straight upwards. So F sub n, perpendicular to the incline. We're also going to have a force of friction going the opposite the way sliding down. So it's going to be going this way. And then what we want to do is actually label the force or the weight force in X and Y components. So when I say X and Y on this problem, I'm talking about this axis right here is going to be the X. So above the incline, we said that's the X axis. And then this right here, perpendicular to the incline is the Y axis. So when I say the X and Y component, I'm talking about uh, the component along this is going to be the X for the weight, and then the Y is going to be the one along this. And you can imagine it sort of like this. So this would be the X and this would be the Y. So what we want to do now is find the X and Y for this. So the way we do that is by drawing a triangle. And so this triangle is basically this one right here. So MG is this line right here, which is the hypotenuse on our triangle. And then this angle is the same as the angle of the incline. That's just something you have to know. So this is 14 degrees. And so what we're trying to do is find the X which is opposite to the angle, which is this, and then the y component because it's along the y. So what we want to do is find each of these. And the way we do it is by using trig. So we know the sine of an angle. In this case, it's going to be 14 degrees is equal to what? So sine is opposite over hypotenuse. And on our triangle, uh, the opposite is x and the hypotenuse is mg. So x over mg, which just means x, or if you multiply both sides by mg, you're going to get the x component, which is just mg times the sine of 14. So the x component of uh, the, the weight force is just this. And then for y, you just use cosine. So in this case, cosine of 14, uh, we know cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. So it's going to be the adjacent, which is y, over the hypotenuse, which is mg. So multiplying both sides by mg, you get y. So you're going to get the y component of the weight force is going to be mg times the cosine of 14. So now we've got both of these. And so what we're going to do to solve this problem is by taking the sum of the forces in the x direction, and you'll see why it works out the way it does. So the sum of the forces in the x direction are going to be equal to zero. And the reason this is is because uh, it's not going to be moving. So we're assuming the object's at rest. And so zero is going to be equal to, and then we have to sum up the forces in the x direction. So remember how I said the x direction is this axis right here? So this is the x. So what we want to do is find all the forces acting along this axis. And so if it's acting this way to the left, I'm going to say it's negative, And to the right, I'm going to say it's positive. So to the left, this force of friction is acting. So we're going to say it's negative force of friction because it's to the left. And then to the right, we have this x component acting on our x-axis. But keep in mind, it's to the right, so it's positive. So we're going to add uh, the x component of gravity, right, which is mg times the cosine of 14. And so what this should tell you is that the force of friction, or sorry, not mg times the cosine. Uh, it's going to be the sine. The cosine is uh, the y. So the y is uh, cosine, and then this is the sine. I made a mistake. So the x is sine, so it's going to be plus mg times the sine of 14 because it's in the y. So now we have all the forces added, uh, added up in the x because keep in mind the y is, this is in the y and then f sub n is also in the y. So what this tells you, if you add force of friction to the other side, it's just going to be equal m to mg times the sine of 14. So if we want to find the force of friction, which is what a is asking us for, it, we know it's just equal to mg times the sine of 14. So solving for it, the mass of our object is 0.27 times g, which I'm just going to estimate at 9.8. You can use 9.81 if you'd like, but I'm just going to use 9.8 times the sine of 14. So go ahead and plug this in. 0 0.27 uh, times 9.8 times the sine of 14. Now when you do that, you'll get the force of friction equals 0 0.64, uh, 0, 0.01. So I'm just going to round to 0 0.64. And then it's going to be newtons because we measure force in newtons. So 0.64 newtons, that's going to be uh, the magnitude of the frictional force or your answer to A. So that's A. Now let's move on to B. So for B, they're asking, what is the minimum coefficient of static friction uh, required to keep the mug from moving? So the way we're going to solve this is uh, using this formula. The force of friction is equal to mu sub s times f sub n. So what we can do is uh, if we divide both sides by f sub n, we can solve for mu sub s, which is essentially going to be the coefficient of static friction. And since this is going to be the force of friction acting on it, it basically means uh, all we have to do is just plug this value in for the force of friction and divide by the normal force to solve for mu sub s which is the coefficient of static friction they're looking for. So it's going to be equal to the force of friction, which is 0.64. And then what we have to do now is solve for f sub n. So 
The way we solve for f sub n is by taking the sum of the forces in the y direction instead of the x. So last time we did the x and now we're doing the y. So we're going to say 0 since force equals ma, right? f equals ma, but it's not moving at all in the y direction, which just means the acceleration uh, is going to be 0. So 0 equals, and then let's add up the forces in the y. So just like this one, we had two forces. We have two forces in the y, which is the normal force and uh, the y component of your weight force. So if it's going upwards, I'm going to call it positive, And if it's going downwards, I'm going to say it's negative. So upwards is f sub n, so we leave it positive. And then we're going to minus uh, the, the y component of the weight force because it's going down. So the y component is mg times the cosine of 14. So mg times the cosine of 14. And if we add this to the other side, it just tells us the normal force is essentially equal to uh, the y component of the weight force, which is mg times the cosine of 14. And so now we have uh, the normal force. So all we have to do is just plug it in. So we're just going to plug it in, and then we can solve right, because we're dividing uh, the force of friction divided by f sub n. So 0.64 divided by mg times the cosine of 14. Uh, the mass of our object is 0.27 times g, which is 9.8. And then we multiply by the cosine of 14. So cosine of 14. So go ahead and plug this in. Uh, 0.64 and then, yeah, so 0.64 and then divide by 0.27 times 9.8 times uh, the cosine of 14. And so when you go ahead and do this, you're going to get mu sub s, or the coefficient of static friction, is going to be equal to 0 0.249, uh, 279, and so on. Uh, I'm just going to round to 0 0.25. You can round however you'd like. Just make sure you do it the way your teacher wants you to. But two, uh, 0.25 is going to be your coefficient of static friction. And keep in mind, it's unitless. We don't have any units for uh, coefficient of static or kinetic friction. So it's going to be about 0 0.25. And yeah, so this is going to be your answer to B. Your answer to A was this right here. And yeah, hopefully you found this useful.